How's it going everyone? Zunabra here coming at you with another patch review. This is the 7.15 patch note guys. We're going to do a complete review of it. We're going to talk about how it's going to affect the meta, how it's going to affect the changes like in solo queue and LCS. We're just going to talk about overall all of it. After this video you should know everything about the patch 7.15. Let's do that then. So first of all guys, we come from a patch 714 that was into full lethality, like everything was about lethality, every video on YouTube was about how lethality was broken, and I hope Riot did some changes to at least the dust blade, I'm expecting some price changes on lethality uh, items, we're gonna see what's going on, let's just start with the champion first, so Urgod guys is gonna be... Um, has been reworked. We've seen a lot of uh, footage from PBE and from Riot Games sharing how Urgot is going to be very strong. It seems to me that he are he is going to he's being pushed into a damage dealer more than like a tanky ADC. We might expect him in the top lane more than a and ADC like role as we used to see it back then. Urgot is a forgotten champion. I'm not sure what it, it is right now about Urgot. I'm not going to share my opinion right now on this video. But once I see more of it, maybe in a week or two, I will give you a complete opinion on what it's good with him, what it's bad with him, what is a counter, what does it counter, what comes to him, and etc. etc. So Akali guys is going to be changed as well. So the passive AP ratio is going to go up plus 0 0.1 point, which is a lot. And W cooldown is reduced. Okay, so... Two ups, Akali is getting up. I think Professor Akali is going to be happy about that. That's crazy, man. The passive uh, getting more ability power, that's very, very interesting. So a very a very single up, like uh, just an up against Akali is interesting. You know why? Because Akali does so well against Assassin as an Assassin herself. Like she can chase, she can go invincible, so she can tempo burst. And I feel like Akali, like... Red Game is trying to push Akali as an answer to Lethality champions being OP and like completely broken. Uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting, and they're pushing the AP side of it and not the AD side of it, so it's even more interesting. They want you to they want to push Akali AP against the Lethality champion. Uh, Akali can be playing the top lane and jungle and even in the mid lane. I wouldn't recommend jungle because it's kind of easy to do anything in terms of ganks because you don't have any gap closer. You just have the W, but it's not very good. There's way better than Akali. Azir, the late game soldier damage is going up, so we're just going up in ratio from 170 to 195 at level 18, so Azir is a very skilled champion, like very hard to play, you have to master the the insect I want to say with the soldier and like the ultimate, you have to master the dash and everything, so I don't know how Azir was doing in the game. I have to say, I haven't played Azir in a long time. I feel like it's not the massive, like, premium pool of champion. Like, he's not in it. He's not in the S-grade champion right now. But this can give it a up, and it could actually mean a lot for, like, a build with um, Nasher Tooth that we've seen being up and a decrease in price. So that could be interesting as well. So Shogaf now. Wait, let me just close my window, guys. It's doing a little bit... All right, I'm back. So, do, so Shogaf now. So, gosh, uh, so Shogaf now. Shogaf guys has been very controversial. We've we've been seeing a lot of LCS players uh, commenting about it, saying it's OP. I personally don't think it's OP. I think it's a champion that's very like Q spell dependent. Like if you don't touch the Q spell, especially in early game, you're kind of useless. Just like Blitzcrank that misses his hook, you just lose so much pressure when you miss the the Q. It's it's just insane. And after that, it's a very easy to kite champion. I want like I know that the R is a huge amount of damage and a huge amount of true damage, but Shogaz have to use this. Like if he doesn't have a huge burst, he doesn't have anything because you don't touch the Q. You can't really do anything. You're not the fastest champion. You gotta use slash all the time. It is what it is. I'm not sure if it's OP. I wouldn't put it in the OP like bowl, but let's see what it did. So the E base damage and percentage health damage is decreased under E. So E has been changed last pack, last patch, if you remember. It's now an active, uh, activable spell, just like any other spell that will buff your next three auto attacks. And the damage is going down throughout uh, mid to lead game. So we're going down 20 actually in late game. And 1% of target maximum health, which is a huge nerf on the E. Uh, deserved, I don't know, uh, I feel like this is a reaction from Red Games um, 
complaints that they've been having from pros and stuff. I personally didn't, don't think that Chogaf is OP. Like, this is my opinion. I just think that once you learn how to catch the Q, that you're like, you, okay, like, it's you're just okay. But that's just my opinion. It is a good champion, but it's not OP. Now let's move on to Dr. Mondo. So Mondo hasn't been changed. We haven't seen him in a while, actually. Like in a few in a few weeks, I want to say. Uh, it was one of the most popular top laner and jungler like back back in Season 6. Now they're going to change something for Masochism. So taking magic damage or paying a health cost increases Dr. Mondo's magic resist by 2%. Stacks up to uh, no, no, 15 times. Okay, no pain, no gain. He now increased magic damage as Dr. takes magic damage. It's interesting. I don't know what... So this is a totally new aspect of the spell. Like, there's nothing being removed. There's nothing being changed. This is just a new thing about masochism. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. It is interesting. Why is Ryan trying to do that? So you see how they try to up Akali's AP damage. They nerfed Shogath. And we're in a lethality. We're in a lethality patch where there's a lot of 80 damage. That's I don't know. That okay. Maybe there. This is just an introduction of maybe a potential up of AP mages like Aerie, Orianna, Syndra in the next patch, or even Talia. We'll see. I'm getting this. I I will keep this in mind if I were you. But right now, this is not really important. It doesn't make Mundo any more valuable, uh, except against AP centric. Uh, combo but right now we're seeing lethality everywhere so eco now eco e cooldown reduced at early level so the e is the dash that lets you uh, blink into a target for the next auto attack dealing extra damage and the cooldown is going to go down in early levels going from 11 to 9 at level 1 which is good because it is usually the spell you max second and level 7 when you start to max it uh, rank 2 etc it is hard to to just depend on an 11 second uh, on the 11 second cooldown for so long, so this is actually a good up. Eco players, you should be happy about that. Actually, I'm not an eco player, but you guys should be happy about this. It leaves now base damage uh, decreased, so the base attack damage is gonna go down to 47 instead of 50.5. Again, I'm not sure why they're doing this. Are they trying to promote? So like when I read this patch, guys, I'm not trying to read it to you and just say oh that's what happened i'm trying to understand the reasoning behind it uh that red gives is trying to do to affect solo queue and lcs and like professional gaming in general this is for me interesting like what so let's see what they say for how much mobility and lane pressure she has it at least just clears too quickly as well as it turns that range basic damage are pretty strong on jungles giving them an easy way to apply red buff we're killing two birds with one stone by making at least attack a bit weaker so they actually Consider at least a range basic attack. Okay, okay. Like, it is, right? It is, but the whole spider thing is usually what is used after the cocoon is placed. It is interesting. I think it's interesting, the, the whole thing about clearing well. It also It's also interesting to know that Elise has compensation with her little spiders that help uh, attack. So the nerf is compensated by that. And I'm agreeing that the, the clearing with Elise is just very easy and very fast. And it's not fair to other jungles. So I get it. Riot, I get it totally. I feel like a lot of people don't read those texts. They're actually really interesting. Like, you guys should take a look at those texts if you read the patch after this video. Read those texts. They give you the reasoning behind changes. So the Q cooldown... Oh, Israel. Whoa, they're changing Israel. That's been so long. Man. The Q cooldown reduced at early levels. So the Q spell is going to lose half a second in early seconds. Uh, going to 6.5 to 5.5, which is huge, actually. Knowing that if you touch... A hero, you get minus one second on it, so that's actually really, really nice. Uh, I feel like this is also to up the the tier of the goddess early on in the game. It's actually really strong, so maybe Blue Ezreal could come back. I'm not sure because of that up specifically, but maybe they're going to introduce new stuff uh, after, and it will make maybe bring back Ezreal, Blue Ezreal, which is one of the fun, uh, funniest champion to play. Like It's really entertaining, really mo mobile, and you do a lot of damage. Gangplank now is going to be changed, the passive damage is going to go up, so the little burning flames when you auto-attack someone every uh, every now and then, I'm not sure the, the second, but it deals a lot of damage over time. Uh, trial by fire, damage going to go from three from a range to 30 to 200, 
to a range of 45 to 215. So a really good up in early game. I feel like Gangplank just suffers early on in the game. And has no trouble scaling though. So no trouble scaling at all. Like if it snowballs. It's one of the most snowball champion in the game to be honest. This is a, ni a nice up. Does it bring uh, Gangplank to the meta? I'm not entirely sure. But we'll see, uh, we'll see what, what's next. So Gragas. Gragas, guys, I've been in love with playing Gragas lately. I haven't been the best Gragas player, but I'm just finding the new Season 1, Season 2 feel of a Gragas mid laner that I used to have, and I've been loving it, dude. Like, recently, like, ever since the rework, I felt like they were just trying to bring Gragas as a jungle, and I was like, oh, I really wanted to play Gragas mid, and it's not fitted to the mid lane anymore, but now it's come back, so I'm super happy. I'm super stoked about it. So base attack damage decrease are cooldown increase at early level. So the base attack is being decreased. I mean, this is for the jungle thing, I think, uh, as well, because it with the cleave of the W and just the overall damage from the Q and the E, Gragas is also in the same case as Elise. It just clears a bit too fast. Uh, so I think this is great, uh, great change, even though it's pretty much insignificant. Um, explosive cask. So the R, guys, the cooldown is going to go up in early game going to two minutes instead of a hundred second and it's gonna end up at 80 seconds anyway in the late game plus you should have like always between 20 to 30 percent uh cooldown reduction so in late game you're good just in early game make sure you don't use it like that or like you're gonna have to wait 20 more seconds uh, which which are which is a lot, man. It makes a difference. I mean, see the the ult of Gragas is a playmaker ult, so they give you 20 seconds more to wait for it. That's a bold move from Riot Games, especially because Gragas is such a good response to hold the the whole lethality uh, fashion that we're uh, that we're having right now. I'm not sure what they're nerfing APs, man. Like, why they're not nerfing Zed or why they're not nerfing. Uh, I don't know. They're not nerfing like assassin that are like they. they Keep vibing with the lethality, it seems like. So, Irela, guys, my, my beloved top laning uh, champion, Irela, the ult cooldown is reduced at early ranks. Oh, okay. That's interesting. So, we're going at 100 seconds instead of 110. It's actually good. I think it's really good because the R in Irelia power spikes is huge. It helps her clear waves and it helps her having a ton of burst. It also helps refresh uh, the Sheen proc if you got Trinity Force. So that's really, really good. Jinx, guys. So is this the first ADC change we see except um, except the Urgot? Yeah. Oh, Ezreal as well. Ezreal got changed. So now it's Jinx. The W cooldown is being reduced, so the Q switch arena or bug fix, okay, so I don't care about that, and the zip cooldown is just going to go down. Uh, okay, it's going to go down, but the, the mana cost of the zap is actually really high, so don't get fooled with this. It costs a lot of mana, so don't just spam it because of this change. But 4 seconds, bro. 4 seconds in the late game with some cooldown reduction, you might go... You might go down to 3.5, maybe 3.6 seconds. Yeah, let's say you get the blue buff on the mid laner, and damn, you can just zap every three seconds, man. How cool is that? That is insane. That that is insane. That sounds that that for me is a little bit insane, because it, it lets this lets you check bushes and like dark areas in the map. If you can do this every three seconds, wow! Like that is a really really good up for Jinx. So Kane, guys, the new champion that just came out. Um, I feel like I feel like the the, the day between patch seven point fourteen and seven point fifteen is like not even a few days. I feel like we just started the Lavalley thing. We already have a new patch. I think like Red is just trying to change things before the word championship comes up. So now we have Kane, guys, and he's having a lot of butt fix that I'm not gonna read. Like you guys can go ahead and read it, but the R is gonna be changed. So one point five bonus attack damage. Instead of 1.1, and Darken form loses this ratio in favor of an enemy max health ratio. So it, so is unaffected. Okay, so Darken from form loses this ratio in favor of an enemy max health ratio. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So ultimate base agent damage does make now apparently interacts with Kane's ability. Okay, okay. That's I mean, I think this is interesting. I'm not sure. Uh, Darkin is the tankier one, I think, and this gives him a better thing against tanks. 
I don't know if it's OP. I don't know if it's a nerf or it's really hard to say. Kane's been on the rift for a patch and we mostly lying on the dark in one uh, has been struggling to keep up, especially his burst when he goes all in. Hasn't been enough to consider net kills. Even when ahead, so we are buffing his killing. Okay, okay. So I mean this is a buff for sure. But this is interesting. Okay. Let's move on to Ooh, listen try and Lux, bro. Woo! Let's see what's happening here. Base stat. The base attack damage is going up. Uh, easy, it's going to get easier to last hit with Lysandra, which is cool. And mana per level is going up as well, which is also cool. Clean up. Right now, they're upping the mid laners, man. They're upping, you see how they're upping the mid laners? And they're trying to balance everything up instead of nerfing the Lothali. They're trying to get, the game is about to get interesting, guys. Like, we're seeing mages going up. We're seeing uh, tanks going up as well. Some ADC going up. Instead of bringing down the Lethali, they're trying to bring every, everyone up a little bit. So that we see more interesting matchup, more stuff in, in esports, and more stuff in solo queue. So, right now, I'm pretty happy about this batch. So now we have a Lux uh, up. We have a Lux change, sorry. The Q cooldown is going to go uh, down at early level. So we're going from 15 to 13, from 14 to 12.5, etc, etc. The W, hitting an ally with first magic barrier as it going out doubles the shield granted when it comes back. What? 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 Okay, that's... That's... That sounds a little bit too much. Holy shit, dude. Because, you know, in late game, guys, if I don't know if you realize, but in late game, the shield is about 500. It's about four to 500. Like, if you get Rabadons, Malmortus, all that shit, it doubles it. Like, it's not even like it does 150%. It doubles it. That is insane arena, man. Holy fuck. Okay, I think I'm going to play Lux, guys. Expect some Lux uh, gameplay coming up in my channel. This is absolutely insane, dude. I, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. It doubles the shield when it comes back. So, like, in a poking phase, for example, you make sure you're behind the team or, like, in a lateral way, like, on the side, and you just double shield people, and and they just take no poke. Or you can just tank turret hits like this. <gasps> wow. This is beautiful. Like, this is beautiful, guys. I hope you guys are happy. If you're a Lux player, and you, I'm, I hope you're happy with that. Because I'm super stoked. So, Nami. The Q uh, cooldown is being reduced a little bit. So, we're going to see some Nami action in the bot lane. I love to play Annie. Honestly, Annie is one of the best support out there. Uh, such a good laning. Such a good team fighting. Like, it's it's a great champion. Uh, Nazus. Ooh, Nazus. What changes are you going to make to him? So, the E guys. The, the whole, like, poof, the whole fire... Uh, the whole like AOE damage, armor reduction, we're gonna see, uh, okay, so it's a change in person armor reduction instead of flat armor reduction. So this is gonna be way better against tanks. This is insane, what the fuck, percent armor reduction, like this is so good in late game, dude, what the fuck. In late game, it's gonna be equal. Like in late game, carries get a hundred armor, about a hundred armor with like the zonias or this and that. So it doesn't really change from the flat armor reduction. But for tanks who have like 200, 300 armor, oh, that's like minus ninety, mi minus a hundred armor like that, just like that. Poof, thirty-five percent armor reduction. That's that's a new thing, dude. That's such a good up. And the R guys, one of this is empowered. Ciphering strikes cooldown is reduced by 50%. Oh, what the fuck? Okay, I'm not here to give you like amazing reactions or whatever, but 50% reduction. So, if you play with CDR, if you play with CDR, it's already like a 3 second thing. If it's like 1.5 seconds, if it's like 2 seconds, even if it's like two seconds it's absolutely insane but i get it i get it. like nazis needs to get up it's it's it was it's a champion that's forgotten so they're trying to bring him in in, a, in, in in any way but i think that you guys can ban nazis now because if a nazis otp comes up like um what's the streamer that only plays nazis uh Cir Cirque or some shit and he's gonna love this 
So now we're moving on to uh, not only, sorry if this video is long guys, I'm just taking my time, I'm just giving you all the, the details about every team. It's a long patch man, it's a long long patch. So let's move on to Nautilus. The Q early damage is up, old cooldown reduction at rank 1 and 2. Very good. I think Nautilus should go back into the jungle. Even in the support, I think it's a really good one. The hook is going up, which means that he can gank more or he can make more plays in uh, the lane or the ganks, etc. And the R is going down in cooldown early game, allowing him to gank a little bit more effectively. Like that, That's really important. I feel like it's really, it's sticking in with the Gragas ultimate as well. Like, everything is going into order. So, the E now scales with total AD based armor increase. So, let's see. The based armor is going to increase a little bit. And the E flames, a, a 0 0.3 total attack damage. Missile ratio. Okay. It's going to find one damage per tick. Okay. And dragon form based impact damage is going down in late game. Okay. So, it's um, yeah, I want to say it's a up when you're not a dragon and a, like... A nerf when you're a dragon. When you're a dragon, this thing does so much damage, it's crazy. So, Singe. Oh my god, don't tell me they're gonna up Singe, bro. So, the cure particles are more clear, especially for Colorblind players. Shouts to uh, Climb 9 Sneaky Man. And R now grants stats faster. So, okay, that's actually okay, that's an interesting. So, it means that insanity poison, it was like. Every every little bit of time, like you get more and more stats and more and more stats. So now this is going to be a little bit quicker. This is the game is about to get interesting. The game is about to get interesting, guys. So the boomerang on silver is going to go up in damage at all levels. Woo, going to twenty five to fifty five at level one. Wait, wait, wait. He's getting up a lot, man. Damn. Shouts to silver, man. She's gonna like that. Twisted Fate, the base stats are going up for movement speed. Okay, I guess this is not super, like, this doesn't deserve this much to read. But okay, it's gonna go a little bit faster. TF needs movement speed. GG. Xeraf, ooh. Z Q sl w slow increase, R base damage at later level increased. Okay, okay. Okay. From 10 to 25, center zone now unchanged at, okay, so the center zone is unchanged, but 25 base is absolutely, uh, it's it's just times 2.5, that's it. So, Zach, the, oof, I'm not going to read that, guys, but feel free to read it, link down below. <laughs> so, the Q, the stretching strike is going from 4 to 8% current health. Why did you just doubling damage like that? Cool down, going from... 12 to 13 okay so it's, it just takes more time to come back but it deals more damage but that is such a good up in terms of damage and burst because i felt like zach you don't build a lot of tank uh, a lot of damage anyway it's like a more like full tanky type of vibe so this is actually it actually makes sense it's not like a ratio or anything it's just current health it's your current health right it's not is it your current health or is it the enemy's current health oh no the cost my bad my bad guys i'm sorry the cost is going to be higher and the cooldown is going to be lower higher as well okay i'm i'm done with zach sorry guys the w guys unsustainable unstable matter the damage is just going to go down by half in level one they're going to make it harder for him to clear the jungle that's actually interesting but it was too op like it had to be changed Zix, the w cooldown is being reduced that's going to be huge actually to take turrets going from 18 to 12 late game. Wow, that's okay. So they want Ziggs to be a little bit more offensive. Maybe that could mean something in esports. I feel like Ziggs gonna be a playmaker now to take uh, early turrets. The the first blood, the turret first blood is so interesting now that I feel like Ziggs is a good component for it. So the mid patch seven point updates. Okay, so I don't care about that. Items adaptive helm. Damage taken from repeated instance of spell or affected is reduced by 20% instead of 15, okay? Dust Blade of Dried Heart. Let's see what it did. Please, a little nerf, maybe a little up of cost, but something. So, <clears throat> initial patch, so damage. Then they, re they updated the damage on it, but it was still 350 at level 18. Uh, the patch is 7... Patch 715 damage, so 65 to 320 and for melee champions. For, uh, for ranged champion, okay. Uh, ranged Night Stalker procs no longer slows the target. Okay, that's really good. 
that's eh, the cost is still too low. So this this item is still valuable, guys. Go ahead and buy it. Knight's Val, just the, the health is being decreased. It's this is a this is an item we've been seeing by a lot of support in LCS and in pro streams. This nerf is very uh, it's it's good. It's what it needed to be. Besides that, guys, I think it's gonna be it. Uh, a lot of bug fixes. Some new skin, guys. Omega Squad, Omega Squad, Tristana, Fizz, Twitch, and Vegar. But that's pretty much it. So. Just to just to give you a, re a recap of the of the of the patch, as this is gonna this video is very long. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. It's a very long patch. So Riot Game is trying to not necessarily nerf the lethality, but they're trying to up a little bit the mages. With we've seen Lysandra, we've seen Lux, we've seen Xeraph, we've seen TF. Things that we don't usually see, like we've been seeing Syndra, Oriana, Talia, um, like stuff like that a lot. Like we've been just seeing those a lot. Even Azir has been up, and I think it's such a smart decision for my game because when they up something and they nerf something after, nothing changed, right? Like you literally put a bandaid band -aid and then you ripped it off and nothing changed. Right now, they're trying to balance things out in an upper scale, meaning that there's going to be more damage, more actions, better team fights, and more, more plays, like more and more plays. So, if you play in solo queue, guys, make sure you check out some mages that you want to pick up. I suggest Lux. Lux is going to be a huge pick, honestly. The double shield sounds to me like an insane, insane thing that is going to be corrected, but. Yeah, so you have to know that this is super interesting. So they're not nerfing the Lethality. It's still valuable. It's still there. But they're upping some targeted mages to make the AP squad a little bit stronger. They're, they're upping some tanks. They're nerfing some tanks as well. And it is interesting. So it's going to be a melting pot. The meta is being redefined as we're going into the game. We'll see how the LCS players react to it. But I'm expecting more mages in the mid lane. More... Uh, tanky against like maybe like a Mondo could be introduced in LCS, but definitely more mages in the mid lane and not having like only ADs and SSN like that. Uh, there's been a lot of, of uh, changes as well that are really like outsiders. For example, the Akali um, Akali up is something, but no nobody really plays Akali like it's not a popular champions. And as far as the Urgot remake is concerned, I will probably make a side video for it. So if you guys want me to make a video in a week about Urgot, telling you if it's good, what is good with him, how to play against, how to do this, how to do that on him. I will make sure to play myself uh, and get a real feel of it and tell you my honest opinion on it. From what I've seen so far, it looks like a very, very fun champion to play with a lot of damage. But I gotta see. I gotta see it. I gotta play against it. I gotta play with it. And I, I will just give you my opinion once I have one. So thank you so much for watching this almost 30 minute video guys. If you made it till here, thank you so much for watching. I hope this patch will help you. Make sure you read the patch yourself, that you understand what happened. But to be honest, there's not a lot to think about. Like there's just some champions have been up just as an answer to lethality instead of nerfing lethality because Riot went too far. They decided to bring the entire spectrum up. So that the game can get more interesting. So in Solo Q, <coughs> sorry, in Solo Q should have more fun. LCS should be more entertaining. And those are the patch for words, man. Like, I think 7.17 is going to be the patch for words. But we are, we're moving, we're moving in towards a good, um, towards a good um, path. I think we're moving into a good meta. So thank you so much for watching, guys. If you appreciate this video, f don't forget to comment, like. It really, really helps promote this channel, guys. Um. Tell your friend about me. Tell your friend about my content. That would be that would mean the word to me. And don't forget to subscribe yourself. I'll see you for the next video tomorrow, guys. Peace.